U.S. military, boof who? I hope you get PTSD. This left-wing streamer is one of the most unhinged people on the internet, and she's finally getting the downfall she so very richly deserves. <laughs> We're gonna break down the bizarre saga and downfall of a left-wing streamer named Frogan and so much more on today's episode of the Brad vs. Everyone podcast, my daily show where I take on the craziest ideas from across the internet and across our politics, all from an independent perspective. So unless you're a Twitch viewer, which is a super popular streaming service that started out as people playing video games, but it's kind of morphed into a live streaming platform that hosts massively popular political commentators and is super, super popular with young audiences. One of the most famous people on Twitch is Hassan Piker, the far left socialist influencer. But anyway, unless you're on Twitch and, and you're a viewer, you've probably never heard of Frogan before. I know I hadn't, but I've come to learn that she's one of the most unhinged streamers on the internet. And now she's gone so insane that she's finally gotten herself banned from Twitch. What did Frogan do that was finally too far for even the left-wing people who run Twitch? Well, it's not actually one thing or a simple answer to that question. It's a series of events and controversies that we're going to go through today before I give you my kind of nuance to take on it because I have somewhat mixed feelings on her punishment. But anyway, here is the first clip that recently went viral of Frogan saying she wishes PTSD on U.S. military veterans. Yes, seriously. I have no pity at all for any f soldiers. Distress, thank you so much. I will never have any f pity for any f soldiers. U.S. military? Boo fucking who? I hope you get PTSD. I, I do, the ones I do, I, the ones I'm like whatever about, the U.S. soldiers, are the ones that like acknowledge that like what they did was wrong, they didn't know well back, they didn't know back then. Whatever. You're, you're a good person in my book. Oh my god, Tom, thank you so much for the 10 gifted. The, the, the U.S. military that are like, yeah, like, you know, I did this back then, but now I know it's wrong. Like, I'm changed. Like, f imperialism, f this. You don't deserve the PTSD. But like, any other motherfucker, you're joining them. You're like, oh my god, I want my fucking Camaro. No student loans. F you. I hope you get PTSD. And I hope you get no health insurance when you get back into a fucking America. Oh, well, uh... She seems lovely, doesn't she? <laughs> I mean, I love how quickly the healthcare is a human right crowd throws that one out the fucking window as soon as it's a group of people they don't like. But also, I can't imagine wishing PTSD on someone. Like, there are lots of groups of people that I strongly disagree with and detest, but never have I ever thought to myself, yeah, I hope they have crippling PTSD that leads to disturbingly high rates of self-deletion and unaliving. What? That is a demonic thought process, babe. That's not normal. Seek help. <laughs> and I have plenty of criticisms of the US military and the things we've done abroad, whether it's in Iraq or Afghanistan and some of the war crimes the US military has committed and all of that. But first off, the vast, vast majority of US soldiers have had nothing to do with that. And also, primarily the blame for those bad decisions lies on politicians and generals and decision makers, not low-level military personnel. Anyway, I don't want to go off on a whole tangent about this one crazy clip, but this is the first thing that went viral from Progan that kind of got her on the radar of critics who started scrutinizing her and questioning not only why she was platformed on Twitch, but actually a Twitch partner. So they weren't just allowing her on the platform, but they were actively partnering with her and supporting her and featuring her at Twitch events. And just so you guys know that this really is who she is, and I didn't just show you one clip out of context, here's another clip of Frogan telling viewers that if they help her hit a certain fundraising goal, she will bake a cake version of the Twin Towers and do a live reenactment of 9-11 on stream. Okay, 6250, 9-11 baking stream with Raph and Capri. If we get to this goal by 9-11, Capri, Raph and I will make the Twin Towers out of a stacked cake and we'll make an airplane and we'll recreate 9-11. You can't make this shit up. Where do they even come up with this? <laughs> 
Now, it might not shock you to learn that Frogan has also been accused of anti-Semitism, including a really disturbing event that was at a Twitch official event where Frogan and some other personalities from online and from Twitch basically played a game where they ranked popular creators on a scale of good to bad. And at the top, good was Arab and at the bottom, bad was likes Sabra Hummus, which is an Israeli hummus company that is targeted by anti-Israel activists. So a lot of people have interpreted that to mean Zionist or Jew or something to that effect. Here's a clip from the Jewish, although very liberal, content creator Ethan Klein, who is not even a huge Israel fan, but does believe it at least has a right to exist. He broke down this controversy involving Frogan and the other streamers and gave his take on it. Let's take a look at it and see what exactly is Twitch endorsing here. Okay. It's the perfect transition to our first person, Hassan. Yeah. yeah. Gee, I wonder where they're going to put Hassan. Mm. I'm going to guess they're going to put him in Arab. Hassan is Turkish. But he's a brother. Yeah. You know? So... Yeah, I think he'd be on Arab coded. I, I mean, I would put him in Arab to be honest. I would, I would put him also in Arab. <laughs> Which is great. That's that's the good one. That's the one you want. Austin, let's go down the line. He's, he's Arab. Arab. He's Arab. Arab. He's, he's, he's Arab. Lebanese. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good job. I, I thought we'd go ahead. Good job, Austin. The next person is one of my favorite people. Ethan Klein. <laughs> I told you guys to clap. <laughs> This is a good reaction. That was a good one. <laughs> that's, oh, that's good. Right. Jewish. <laughs> where's the, where's the, you guys are missing a category for Zionist. <laughs> that was a joke. That was just a joke in my Stand up, stand up, stand up. We're very proud of you, Denim, for bringing anti-Semitism right on stage, and you guys are killing it. Now, amid all of this backlash and all of these controversies, Twitch has taken action against Frogan, suspending her for 30 days under their policy for hateful conduct. In her defense, Frogan is arguing that the tier list they did was a meme and was not supposed to mean uh, Jew when they referred to hummus. She wrote on Twitter, the whole basis of my podcast, Arabs with Capri and Raf, is that we are all Arabs from different religious backgrounds. I am Muslim, Capri is Christian, and Raf is Jewish. Sabra hummus is objectively the worst hummus to exist and is the unfortunate standard of hummus in the U.S. I'm not sure I'm buying that excuse personally, but I thought I would include it so you could hear both sides of this story. Now, I wanted to talk about this, not because I particularly care about Twitch drama, but because I think there's a, a couple of key themes here that come into play with this controversy that I do have thoughts and including some mixed feelings on. For example, there is this question of free speech versus censorship. And as much as I it pains me to say it, I think even though many of the things Frogan has said are detestable, my ideal would be a platform like Twitch allows people to speak almost as long as they're not saying anything illegal or committing crimes and lets people say crazy and hateful stuff. That is my preference as somebody who believes in a, an atmosphere of open debate and culture and speech and all of that. However, that is very much not what Twitch is. Twitch is a heavily censorious platform that censors people all the time and bans them permanently or suspends them for saying far less offensive things than what Froken has said. So in that context, it is, I think, fair to say, well, at least Frogan should be held to the same standards. And if you're going to censor all these other people, you should also censor her, even though she's left wing, even though she's a Muslim woman of color or I, I, whatever it, the, the identity politics at, play may be, you should have the same standards. And so she should be banned, especially because Twitch's policies include veterans as a class that you're not allowed to be hateful towards. And I don't know how anybody could watch that clip and say she didn't violate that policy. Like I said, I have mixed feelings about it because I really would prefer a platform that's open to all viewpoints, even the freaking craziest ones. But again, that's just not where Twitch is at. So hard for me to really defend her too much in light of that. What I will say, though, is the fact that Twitch partnered with her, made her a Twitch partner, which is a form of affiliation or sort of endorsement, 
and featured her at events shows how morally rotted and corroded and insane this company is. And as far as I can tell, she's still a Twitch partner, and or at least will be after her ban is over. It's still in her bio on social media. So the fact that they haven't revoked that at the very least is actually crazy to me. And I have to point out the identity politics angle here. I think if Frogan were a white dude who said the same thing, she probably would have been censored long ago, dropping these kinds of crazy takes. But there is very much a reality when you're in these progressive online spaces and you check off different identity victim boxes like a Muslim woman of color, you get away with more. Your identity is used as a shield. Even now, people are framing this as Twitch censoring Arab creators, like as if that's why, because of their race or ethnicity, when clearly it's because of what they've been saying and doing both on and off the platform. So I really can't stand that, the weaponization of identity politics to shield yourself from criticism or to avoid accountability for terrible behavior. More importantly, though, I was struck by this story because the kids are not all right. Like something is wrong with Gen Z or with young people. If somebody this obviously unhinged and just extreme and delusional with their political worldview can somehow gain an audience and be popular and make a career out of creating content online, like, where is the demand for this? How radical? How crazy? How delulu? How many crack pipes do you have to have hit for this content to see this content and be like, yeah, that's my girl. I'm going to tune in and financially support her. I can't understand the mindset of a person who would feel that way, but it bothers me to think that there's actually some thousands upon thousands of young people who tune in and support people like this. And of course, Frogan is a somewhat smaller creator, but then at the top of the Twitch empire is Hassan Piker, the left-wing socialist who has literally said America deserved 9-11, and he is so popular. Millions of people turned in to, to hear him, even though he pushes some of the most insane, ridiculous propaganda I've ever seen in my life. And so everything I'm concerned about Frogan and her having an audience is just times a thousand when it comes to Hassan and the other left wing voices that dominate this platform and this corner of the Internet, which is part of why I'm doing what I'm doing and commenting and entering this space of Internet debates and drama, because I desperately want there to be a sane centrist or center right alternative for young people to tune into and actually hear a perspective that makes sense, that supports freedom, that supports tolerance, that supports American values that doesn't hate our country or want to see the downfall of the West, but is open to critiquing it and making our system fairer and better for everyone. Just the kind of common sense and nuance that is totally absent from many corners of the internet, most prominently Twitch and other streaming services. But well, what do you guys think of this woman, Frogan? Are you happy to see her banned off Twitch? Do you think her ban should actually be permanent? Let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. I do read the comments and I take the time to respond to a few in every episode. So do make sure that you leave your comments below with your thoughts. And if you leave your comment with a super chat or a super thanks, I'll definitely respond to it on tomorrow's show. Or actually, I should say Friday's show because there won't be any show on Thursday tomorrow because I will be traveling. So sorry, try not to miss me too much. Up next, we've got to check in on Kamala's VP, Tim Walls, because he just humiliated himself on live television. Here's a clip of the Minnesota governor and Democratic VP nominee on with Jon Stewart, where he made an interesting argument that conservatives and libertarians should support the Harris Walls ticket for this reason. The Cheney thing, do, do we really have to do that? Uh, look, I, it goes broader than that. Look, Bernie Sanders, Dick Cheney, Taylor Swift. No, 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 Having the Don't. Cheneys on board? No, you, you can't Dick Cheney or Taylor Swift, no. <laughs> Dick, we're what, a big ten. When did, we're what, a big ten. what country did Taylor Swift get us to invade? No. Yeah. No, don't don't you think though that, and I do this. I believe this. Yeah. There is still a core group of folks out there. You know, your point being, and not joke, the the, the don't tread on me, the Reagan piece of this, the the libertarian piece, of, but the constitutional piece. Yes. There are a lot of people out there. I think 
I think Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney give permission to those folks who want to find a reason to do the right thing. It doesn't mean they agree with us. We're not going to take their foreign policy decisions and discussions, you know, and implement those. We're going to take Pro their, uh, Pro their... Promise? Yes, promise. <laughs> promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a stressful time. It's a stressful it? time! <laughs> Okay, so there's so much to unpack from that clip, but to me, it really showed Tim Walz's profound political, civic, and just societal ignorance. The idea that libertarians, who are some of the most like anti-war, anti-interventionist people when it comes to foreign policy, would see Liz and Dick Cheney supporting Kamala Harris and say, oh, I guess we could support her. No, babe. It would have the opposite effect. Your Delulu is showing. They would be repulsed by that and say, oh, well, if Dick Cheney and Liz are against Trump, maybe I should give Trump another look. That's how actual died in the wool libertarians would view that endorsement. In the same way, the idea that like Reaganites or uh, constitutional conservatives would be swayed by Dick or Liz Cheney is also kind of silly. They are not influential figures with the Republican Party anymore because their brand of politics, which often trampled all over the Constitution when it came to surveillance and the Patriot, Patriot Act and those kinds of things, is very out of fashion with the modern GOP. They are not supported. That's why Liz Cheney was trounced out of Congress in a primary. And I also reject the idea that Liz Cheney is some principled political hero. I think she has one principle, which is aggressive military interventionism and in foreign policy. And that's all she cares about. I mean, you can look up the background here, but she threw her lesbian sister under the bus to try to win a Senate seat years ago that she lost. She went from being an ardent Trump supporter and defender to then suddenly opposing him. She was super pro-life, but now she's out here on the campaign trail suddenly sounding pro-choice and saying that overturning Roe v. Wade went too far. So she's really flip-flopped all over the place on almost everything except, again, super hawk foreign policy, which is, I think, the thing she sees in the Harris Walls ticket that she isn't so sure she sees on the Trump Vance ticket. And that's fine. She can support whoever she pleases. But the idea that libertarians or constitutionalists would be somehow swayed by that is pure delulu and shows that Tim Walls is truly ignorant. It's also hilarious to see him talking about appealing to the don't tread on me crowd when he was the epitome of the treader during COVID. He, he was one of the single most authoritarian governors during all of COVID with his lockdowns and his executive orders and his sweeping interventions into people's personal freedoms and crushing them and taking away their jobs and their schools and so much more. It's just so ironic to hear that coming from him. Of all people, there is no self-awareness at all. And he says that he won't agree with Liz and Dick Cheney on foreign policy, which I certainly don't agree with them, so I guess I'm glad to hear that, but I'm a bit confused as to how their views meaningfully diverge. For example, their policies on Ukraine are very similar. Their policies on Israel might be somewhat different, but they, they all seem to support sending more money and more weapons to Israel. It's just not super clear what that distinction is, and I think that does tell us something about the shifting tides within the Democratic Party, which has actually become more similar to the neoconservative Republicans of yesteryear in its foreign policy, not in its domestic policies for sure, but in its foreign policy, whereas Republicans have almost become more like the old progressives, at least some Republicans. Trump sometimes sounds like an anti-war lefty, then of course sometimes he sounds very different. He's kind of all over the place. But in short, I thought this clip was remarkable just because it really showed how thin the thought behind a lot of the Harris Walls campaign coalition and just strategy is and how profoundly pro ignorant Tim Walls is. I mean, we've heard him talk in the past about the First Amendment in ways that are totally wrong and incorrect, like falsely claiming that hate speech and misinformation are protected. And now we have him here displaying a total ignorance of actual political ideologies or how they intersect, intersect with real world politics. It's just not impressive to say the very least. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. And now it's time for Brad versus TikTok, my daily segment where I take on the craziest ideas from the clock app. 
today, we're taking a look at an unhinged video from a woman who very openly says she hates all men and wants you to as well. One of my biggest goals on this app is to train more women to be misandrous. It is oh. not enough. To Guys, for context, misandrist is the opposite of misogynist. So instead of hating women, it means hating men. She wants to spread hatred against men on TikTok and is openly bragging about it. <laughs> This is fine. It is not enough to not like men or like, oh, they're okay. I want you to violently abhor men. You need to hate them. Like, uh, it's actually abhor is the correct pronunciation of that word. But more importantly, this is insane. They do not deserve your respect. They are literally subordinate to women. Male socialization like makes every man subordinate to him. Look at them. They don't deserve anything from you. Like I genuinely, <laughs> genuinely, genuinely am a misandrist. Not that cute, like, oh yeah, misandrist. No, like, no, like, girl, if we start talking about my shit, like, it gets a little scary because I don't think they deserve rights. And I don't give a f And any man that tries to come, uh, you're the exact type of loser, lame ass, broke ass, fucking ugly ass man I'm talking about, loser. Holy crap. That is one of the most unhinged videos I've seen on TikTok in a long time. And that is saying something. I'm going to give you more of my thoughts on the video, but first, guys, let's take a quick look at some of the comments, which were just eating this insanity up and affirming the Delulu. This video is actually really iconic, I fear. Love this energy. Immediate follow. Thank you, queen. I agree. They should all be put in chains. Oh? <laughs> and only used for manual labor and forced BDing. No idea. Oh. Uh oh, not the way they like it, too. We need a drow matriarchal society. Another person wrote, I wholeheartedly agree with this. I believe in being a violent misandrist, not a palatable feminist. And the creator replied and said, yes, resistance is not supposed to be palatable. Well, babe, if your goal is to be unpalatable, it's working. Another person wrote, I've never followed someone so quickly. And another woman wrote, standing ovation, clap, 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 me too. And that comment has been liked 1300 times. Are women on TikTok okay? <laughs> I mean, I know this isn't most of them. I know this is like a tiny fringe of women on TikTok, which even women on TikTok are not representative of women at large. But like, this isn't good. This isn't stable or normal thinking. You shouldn't hate anybody. You shouldn't hate any demographic group of people blanketly, let alone want to encourage others to do the same. It's giving woke KKK. <laughs> I mean, she literally said she doesn't want men to have rights. And maybe she's being intentionally somewhat hyperbolic for like comedic purposes or whatever, but I checked out her other content. This is not satire. This is not meant completely in jest or as a joke or something. She genuinely feels this way about men, and that's frightening. I'm really sorry for her in a way because maybe she's had some really bad experiences with men that are have hurt her and led her to this dark place. But like, it's not fair to hate a whole group of people because of the actions of individuals who belong to that group. And I'm sure this woman, who for audio listeners is black, would understand that. That if, for example... I was mugged multiple times by uh, two black men. I wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair to, for me to then hate all black men or blame all black men or want them to lose rights. So no matter what experiences she's had with men that are negative, I, my heart does go out to her for anything that may have occurred, but it's not okay to let it bring you to this kind of dark, hateful place. Even from your own self-interest, this is not the best approach for you. Like, this is not a mindset or a worldview that will lend itself towards a happy life with friends or successful romantic relationships with men or even just going about your day-to-day -day life in a productive and happy way can't occur when you despise half the population categorically. And again, I have to reiterate one of my complaints about TikTok. The most milk toast, center-right, let alone conservative perspectives are routinely taken down as hate speech. But you can literally say 
whatever you want about men, about white people, whatever, and that's never considered hate speech. Just like what we were talking about earlier, I'd rather have it all be allowed. Like that's my preference as somebody who believes in an open marketplace of ideas. But if you're going to have policies that restrict hate speech or attacks on groups of people, but then only enforce them or at least mostly enforce them in one direction, that's not fair and it's kind of messed up. But what do you guys think of this woman's video and of her content? Are you her new biggest fan or do you, like me, have some concerns? Let me know in the comments and do hit that like button while you're at it. And now we'll wrap up today's show by reading a few of your comments from the last episode. One person writes, Brad, I am deeply sad to learn about the abuse in your past. I must say, I already felt that you are a person who rises above his challenges, but the level of compassion I've seen you advocate for your political opponents hits even harder knowing what you've suffered. Much respect, my friend. Thank you so much. And I can't read them all, but thank you all to everybody who wrote me kind messages about that. It really does mean a lot. Another person says, my mother-in-law just found out that I'm a conservative and suddenly is showing off all her Harris Waltz bumper stickers and signs when I visit, asking me if giving a pink glass hurts hurt my masculinity. What should I do? I watch every video you post and love your show. Guys, I would love to answer your questions and give you advice. So if you leave a comment with a super chat, I'll do that. So I'm sorry. It sounds like your mother-in-law is not being very nice and she's being kind of childish. How I would reply or respond to this is she's trying to bait you or troll you. I would just not engage. I just not give her the satisfaction of riling you up. She gives you a pink glass. I'd say, oh, thank you. And I'd sip it femininely and maybe joke about it and just show her it doesn't bother you. And if you're confident in your masculinity, don't let her like troll you, right? Just be confident in yourself. And if she wants to give you a pink glass, drink out of a pink glass. Who cares? You're, if you know you're a good man, you're a masculine man whatever. It doesn't matter. And the same thing, if she tries to bait you about politics, just don't engage. Just say, okay, that's your feeling. All right. I respect your opinion. That's not my opinion, but you're entitled to yours. Like seriously, when people try to troll you like this, the best way of getting back at them is to not give them what they want in the first place, which is to upset you or troll you. And I'm sorry, your mother-in-law is being like that. Maybe she's a great person in other ways, but that's kind of childish behavior. So I'm sorry to hear you're dealing with it that, but that's my advice. Another person says, I used to have her mindset, and this is about the non-binary from yesterday's episode. I'm a trans guy, and I used to say that people who called me a girl were denying my humanity. I now see how reactionary, narcissistic, delusional, and hysterical that mindset is. I don't care what people call me, as I don't give others the power to control my well-being. I hope she grows out of it and finds clarity. Love your videos, man. Well, thank you, and I'm happy for you. I would gladly call you whatever you'd prefer to be called. But you know what? Ultimately, your sense of self has to be internal and not give a shit about what the rest of the world thinks. Like I get so many hateful messages every day from strangers and they used to bother me, but they don't bother me at all. I opened up my Twitter DMs the other day and somebody had just messaged me with zero context, the F slur for gay people. That's it. That's the whole message. No context. And I just don't care because I feel good about myself inside. I genuinely do. I didn't always, but I do now. I like my life. I like who I am. I like my goals and my vision and my dreams and what I'm building. And so it just doesn't affect me. And it sounds like you're in the same place. And I'm so happy for you. Another person wrote, my father passed away in January. We got into political debates all the time. Each one ended up with one of us cracking a joke and we laugh hysterically. He was an amazing father and one of my best friends. I can't imagine giving up a single day of that over political differences. I'd give anything to hear him call me a loony liberal one more time. This actually made me tear up the first time I read it, but I'm so happy that you guys had that relationship. And you know what? Some people with your parents, maybe you just don't talk about politics if you can't do it. If they they get too angry or hostile, but just focus on preserving that relationship and the positive aspects. But if you are able to talk about it and joke about it and laugh about it, that's special too. And I feel you not in the same way. I haven't lost a parent to death, so I can't directly relate to that. But I feel you not having a relationship with my dad, how upsetting it must be to see people like Jeffrey Marsh out here saying, cut off your parents if they vote for Trump. Like, no, you're actually evil for suggesting people do that. Terrible, terrible advice. Another person wrote, the unrealized capital gains tax will create hundreds of thousands of new jobs. And at first I read this, I was like, Huh? And then the comment finishes as that's how many additional IRS agents it will take to sort out the resulting mess. <laughs> there you are, actually. That's a good point. 
Another person writes, hit the like button to reward my suffering in quotes. Brad, my dear, I think you need an exorcist and therapy after those Jeffrey videos. Well, then you better keep watching the show and engaging it and recommending it to your friends because I'm going to have to pay for that exorcist somehow. And I've heard they don't come cheap. Another person says, you're very annoying and come off as arrogant. You know, I don't think I'm annoying, but I'm a little biased. And I think maybe I do come off as arrogant sometimes. Um, and I should try to work on that. Anyway, guys, that's it for today's episode of the Brad vs. Everyone podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do make sure you're subscribed if you aren't yet. Do hit that like button before you go and do comment with your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I do take the time to read the comments every day and I pick few to respond to in every episode. Plus, if you leave your comment with a super chat or a super thanks, I'll definitely respond to it on, on Monday's show at this point because there won't be a show Thursday and I'm going to try to pre-record a viral video Friday show for you guys. Uh, but regardless, we'll talk again for real in real time on Monday. Uh,